Hey gamers, welcome back to Epic Encounters. Today, we're diving into the latest drama surrounding Dustborn. This is our third video on this game, and honestly, I wish it could be our last. But the controversies just keep coming. Dustborn has already faced criticism for its woke agenda, but now it's mired in accusations of using stolen assets from GTA Online, disparaging men and openly threatening to push a LGBTQ plus agenda in video games. And if that wasn't enough, the game received significant funding from the European Union and Norwegian government, which only adds fuel to the fire. We've got a lot to unpack here, so let's jump right in. That was... different. You make a living doing this? We're a bit rusty, and it's been... a long day. Yeah, sure thing. By the way, that song could be considered offensive in the Republic. This isn't Pacifica. People here don't like politics with their entertainment. What's your band name? We're the Dust Boy. <laughs> First, let's take a look at the game itself. Dustborn is set in North America in the year 2030, where the United States is fractured into different regions. The American Republic, under the control of a fascist police force called Justice, led by President Samuel Ward, dominates most of the country. California has seceded and is now called Pacifica, a corporatocracy controlled by the wealthy elite while Texas has rebranded itself as the Libertarian State of Colombia. The game's world is one where global warming, civil wars, and extensive migration have drastically altered the landscape. This dystopian setting is designed to echo the fears and concerns of today's left-leaning ideologies, with themes of authoritarian governments, corporate greed, and the destruction of democracy. The protagonist, Pax, is a gig worker, con artist, and outcast with powerful vocal abilities, trying to transport a mysterious package across this divided land. She's also four months pregnant, adding yet another layer of social commentary to the game's narrative. But it's not just the setting that's problematic. The entire premise of the game feels like a thinly veiled political agenda. The developers at Red Thread Games seem more interested in pushing their worldview than in creating a compelling story or engaging gameplay. The idea that words have the power to alter reality and hack minds is central to the game, but instead of exploring this concept in an interesting way, Dustborn uses it as a tool to push leftist propaganda. The game's themes of disinformation, propaganda, and language policing are all too familiar in today's political climate, and it's clear that Dustborn is trying to capitalize on these ideas. Now, let's get into the most recent scandal, the stolen assets. Following Dustborn's catastrophic launch, accusations surfaced that the game had ripped off assets from Grand Theft Auto Online. This is no small claim, considering the vast resources and creativity that go into a game like GTA Online. The accusation was made by ex-user Hayslick That's Me, who pointed out that Dustborn had copied the layout of an apartment from GTA Online almost exactly. Paintings, TV placement, room layouts, and even the small garden were all in the same locations. In response to these accusations, Thea Berg, one of the developers behind Dustborn, seemingly confirmed the use of stolen assets, 
with a dismissive and mocking tone. Berg's response on X was, This is the funniest shit I've ever seen. Dude, why do you care? She later added, I'm sorry to inform you that GTAV uses paid pre-made assets, boo. This response is not only unprofessional, but also reveals a concerning attitude towards intellectual property and creative integrity. It's as if the developers at Red Thread Games believe they are above the rules that govern the rest of the industry. The fact that they would so brazenly admit to using assets that closely resemble those from GTA Online speaks volumes about their approach to game development. It's no wonder the game has been such a colossal failure if this is how they treat their work. But the controversies don't stop with stolen assets. Following the game's release, further troubling comments from Thea Berg were uncovered, revealing a deep-seated disdain for men and a clear intention to push a gay agenda in video games. In one post, Berg wrote, Men as a concept was cooked. In another, she stated, Men are the weakest link truly. These comments are not just offhand remarks. They are part of a broader pattern of behavior that reflects a toxic mindset within the development team. Berg didn't stop at merely disparaging men. She also declared her intention to fill video games with knitting men and sexy non-binary peeps, proudly proclaiming that she would never stop and that people should be afraid because she comes not in peace. This kind of rhetoric is incredibly divisive and alienating. It's one thing to include diverse characters and perspectives in a game, but it's another to openly declare a mission to push a specific agenda while disparaging an entire group of people. Gamers are not interested in being preached to or having someone else's beliefs shoved down their throats. And this is precisely why Dustborn has been met with such widespread rejection. Adding insult to injury, Dustborn was co-funded by government entities including the Creative Europe programme of the European Union and the Norwegian Film Institute. According to reports, Red Thread Games received €150,000 from the Creative EU grant programme and nearly €1.4 million USD from the Norwegian Film Institute. That's a significant amount of taxpayer money being funnelled into a game that has been an absolute disaster. Mark Kern, a former World of Warcraft team lead, has been vocal about the misuse of these funds. He noted that Dustborn is essentially an Antifa training game where players bash the fash across the divided states of America using vocal powers to call people racist. According to Kern, the game's existence seems to be dependent on repeated government grants as it clearly isn't making money on its own. This raises serious questions about how public funds are being allocated why is taxpayer money being used to fund a game that openly promotes a divisive agenda and has been a commercial failure? It's not just Dustborn that's concerning. According to Kern, Red Thread Games has a history of relying on government grants to fund its projects, all of which have failed to achieve commercial success. This suggests a pattern of grifting off public funds without delivering anything of value in return. The idea that games like Dustborn are being funded by taxpayer money is deeply troubling. It's one thing for a private company to take risks on a controversial or niche product, but it's another entirely for public funds to be used to push a specific ideological agenda. Taxpayer money should be used for the public good, not to fund projects that alienate large segments of the population. The problems with Dustborn don't end with its story, stolen assets, or government funding. The game's voice acting and overall presentation are also disastrous. Remember how we turned the gals against Fred using Discord? We can do the same thing in combat and trick our enemies into turning on each other. Trust no one. You're not playing fair with that armor, buddy. Carrying a baseball bat here, not a bazooka. You know that's not what happened. You're gaslighting me. You attacked first. Vox don't work on machines. But we have a trick up our sleeve, kid. Let's trigger ourselves. Your failure! It's clear that the developers didn't put much effort into ensuring that the characters sounded believable or that the dialogue was engaging. Instead, we're left with flat, uninspired performances that do nothing to bring the story to life. 
The voice acting is particularly jarring when combined with the game's already problematic narrative. Characters deliver their lines with all the enthusiasm of someone reading from a phone book, which only serves to highlight the game's other shortcomings. The writing itself is equally lacklustre, filled with cringeworthy lines that feel more like lectures than natural dialogue. This is a game that is trying to be edgy and provocative, but it falls flat at every turn. Moreover, the game's art style and overall presentation do little to save it from the dumpster fire it's become. The comic book aesthetic could have been an interesting choice, but it's executed so poorly that it feels more like a gimmick than a thoughtful design decision. The characters are caricatures, the environments are bland, and the overall visual design is uninspired. It's as if the developers spent all their time focusing on pushing their agenda and forgot that they were supposed to be making a video game. Dustborn is just the latest in a series of woke games that have bombed spectacularly. Every new product that tries to push a progressive agenda seems to fail harder than the last, and that's a good sign for the future. Video game players, a market that now dwarfs movies and TV streaming, are rejecting woke material en masse. Dustborn is a case in point. The game was aggressively advertised with a cast of queer activist punk rock characters, setting out on a road trip across an America controlled by conservative oppressors. The premise was so heavy-handed and one-sided that it turned off gamers before they even had a chance to play. The idea that you could fight a fascist government by using the power of words to gain allies and divide enemies is laughable at best. The game's attempt to be edgy and subversive is impossible to take seriously, and gamers saw right through it. What's more, the failure of Dustborn is part of a larger trend. Public support for woke media is dead, and the sooner developers realise this, the better off they'll be. Gamers are tired of being told what to think and how to feel. They want games that are fun, engaging, and that offer an escape from the real world, not a lecture on the evils of society. The collapse of Dustborn is a clear indication that the gaming community is fed up with being bombarded with political messaging in their entertainment. At this point, Dustborn is a game that's already been forgotten by most of the gaming community. Despite all the hype and the significant amount of government funding it received, the game launched to the deafening sound of crickets. On Steam, the project garnered a maximum of just 83 players on launch day, a total flop of epic proportions. It's ironic that a game about rebel queers fighting a fascist government was co-funded by the very government entities it seeks to criticise. This is the height of hypocrisy, and it's no wonder the game has been rejected so thoroughly. The notion that popular games dealing with America need to be adjusted for modern audiences with forced diversity and leftist messaging is based on a fallacy that all of America is the same as New York and LA. This couldn't be further from the truth, and gamers have made it clear that they're not interested in these kinds of products. The fallout from Dustborn's failure is likely to have broader implications for the industry. Developers and publishers need to take a hard look at what they're creating and why. If they continue to prioritise ideology over quality, they'll continue to see their games fail. The market has spoken, and it's time for the industry to listen. In conclusion, Dustborn is a perfect example of what happens when developers prioritise an agenda over creating a quality game. From its stolen assets to its divisive narrative, the game was doomed from the start. The developers at Red Thread Games seem more interested in pushing their worldview than in making something that people actually want to play. And the result is a game that's been thoroughly rejected by the gaming community. But Dustborn's failure also serves as a valuable lesson for the industry. Gamers don't want to be preached to or manipulated. They want games that are fun, engaging, and that offer a sense of escape. Developers who ignore this reality do so at their own peril. The gaming community is more discerning than ever, and they're not going to put up with low-quality products that try to shove an agenda down their throats. What do you think about Dustborn's failure? Do you think the developers' focus on pushing a woke agenda was their downfall? And what do you make of the government funding that supported this project? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this one. And with that, 
we wrap up this deep dive into Dustborn. If you enjoyed this video, or if you're as shocked by Dustborn's failure as I am, make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth gaming analysis. As always, keep exploring, keep gaming, and stay epic. We're the Dustborn. <laughs> 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 <laughs>